how to go about, you know, at the genesis of the shit. We've already, my research team has identified our target demographic. We know what we want to do, the plan's written. Just some tips, you know what I'm saying, for somebody that's just starting the shit. Man, that sounds like a question for you right there. <laughs> um, wow, so you're starting a business. I mean, the fundamentals is definitely to, once you figure out your, your audience, I wouldn't even write it on paper, I would just go out there and let the people know about the business. That's what I've done. Um, we started the company from scratch, you know, I'm from France. I moved to New York and New York is very competitive. Like, I don't know if anybody is from New York, but New York is extremely competitive. You have to stand out. And the way that I stood out was to go out to networking events, you know, four to five networking events a night, and that was after work. So I would go home at 3 or 4 a.m., work the next day, and do it all over again the next day. But by doing that, you know, a lot of people were able to see that I was out and about, and I was at all the hot events. So they started wondering what I do, I'm a socialite, what do I do, and stuff like that. But no, I'm a publicist. So you build like social capital. Yes. So because face, you know, everybody is behind computers, and if you can be in people's face, I feel like that adds the personal touch. You can talk to people, you guys interact, you can create content for social media. Um, from there, you also have to have a, a professional website so that when you meet the people, they actually can go back and see what you have to offer and have just your e-commerce ready for business, you know, so that you can actually start making money. Um, and just from there, just go out there and, and get the business. And like I said, you might get one sale, two sales, but you kind of grow from there. And um, then just expand, you know, just start maybe in Atlanta, go to New York or LA or wherever, where business is being done. You know, don't go to Hawaii. Or <laughs> <laughs> don't go to Ohio. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. I'm but, uh, yeah. Uh, next question. How you doing? My name is HDMI. I'm a recording engineer out of New York, mm -hmm. and I have an artist who's getting a lot of traction via YouTube meaning he has a good story, his name is China Mac, and pretty much anything we put on YouTube right now gets grabbed by Worldstar. So now I'm trying to figure out what would be the next step for us to market him, because I feel like it's a special case. It's not like, more than his music, his story is appealing. So how do we cater to that? Is it getting grabbed or are you sending it that way? Say that again? Is it getting, is it getting grabbed by them or you're sending it to No, them? they're just grabbing it. To the point that we even had a meeting with them, yeah. and they said they wanted to put some money behind <clears throat> our next couple of videos. Well, I mean, if, if his presence is YouTube right now, obviously you want to find a way to enable um, some kind of protection, content ID, for example, so that way, you know, first off, you know, that way you know that that content is protected in a way, yeah. okay? Um, well, I guess I'm basing the question because now the, we've been building our arsenal, right. like the, the project is being ready to be dropped. But it's like, we're ready to put a budget behind the campaign, but we're not exactly sure, you know, what strategies we should use to market him based off of his internet notoriety, so to speak. Well, yeah, well, I mean, that's the first step. I mean, second, the campaign is going to include, obviously, putting the music out in, in avenues, correct? Digital and, and exactly. locally as well. So that's, that's another, you know, point there. In terms of marketing and everything, creating more buzz, I mean, he pretty much already has that. You know, um, so it sounds to me like you're pretty much ready to go. You just need to set up all the right pieces in place to hit the market correctly and make sure that you're going to be able to monetize and profit. Um, yeah, well, that's what it. I mean. What would those key pieces be? Okay, well, distribution <laughs> is one of them, you know, uh, making sure that you're going to be able to, you know, through either his company or our company, place that product in as many eyes and fingers as possible, you know. Without that, without that, there's no... There's no generation, there's no consumption, there's no, there, there's no, um, no creating additional uh, fan base. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I don't know. I, I think first and foremost, I, I get with a good publicist. I mean, if he's got a story, that's, that's the biggest thing, is, is find somebody that, that believes it, and believes in it, would work for you, hire that publicist to, to get outside of YouTube, to go off platform. But don't forget, if he built, this audience at YouTube, don't start ignoring them. You know, retain the audience he has. I think publicity is probably gonna be the right thing if there's a story behind it. Gotcha. Yeah. He does what you guys are saying, like, as far as responding to the fans, he does, he spends like an hour every day just talking awesome. to them. And most of it's outside of the country, to be honest. So, you're saying, yeah, so since he built, you know, everything on YouTube, 
um, kind of, you know, you don't have to stick to that necessarily. You definitely respect it and, you know, stay there, but also look at it and see what it offers. And what I mean by that, like, um, so there's this band um, that recently did this really weird music video um, on YouTube called Fever the Ghost. Um, they're an indie band. But they did this thing where um, you can watch a music video, and uh, if you have it on your phone, it goes to the gyroscope, and you just like a, it's like a VR type thing, where anytime you're anywhere you move, you see different parts of this music video. And they're the first ones to ever do it. So, wow. I mean, you didn't, I doubt anyone probably knew about that, but that's a weird thing. And uh, so that's YouTube. Stick to YouTube and make it, use the functionality of YouTube like, and make weird stuff to get eyes. Like, seriously, like, it, stick with the story and make everything themed. Like, you know, a lot of, like, artists that you respect, if you think about it, they have an aura, they have a theme, everything, you know, the LP, cup art, all of it, it's all themed to that story. Like, you need to stick on that for, to make the artist, like, really pop. Yeah, with Olivia's team, too. <laughs> yeah, for, sure. Best, best for sure. For um, sure. And also another example, um, I saw recently, I think it was Lee Dickey and his video, uh, Co Save That Money, where he just went oh, into uh, um, yeah. all over uh, Beverly Hills and asked rich people to, to film in the house. Wow. That's a great concept. I mean, uh, you have to think of it. You know, you have to think of things like that to stand out. It wasn't that, you know, things like that, you know. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it was very creative. Next question. Uh, a little bit of silence for Carrie the ear, please. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me come to you. I thank you. Yeah, my name is Chase. I'm out here from Toronto. I'm uh, looking at doing a, mu a music publishing initiative, and I'm interested in the licensing that you mentioned. And I know there's avenues online and platforms and music supervisors you can find online and emails. But I'm interested in connecting my product with the person that you need a relationship to do that. So, is there any conference or any festivals that these people are going to? that you can recommend for me to connect in order to develop the relationship? Yeah, I mean, I think you can find them everywhere. I know they do a huge thing in South by Southwest. I know that there are music licensing conferences. Um, if you ever just type in music licensing on Google, you can get lost, and there's tons of information. Um, look into the different performing rights organizations. They do conferences and things like that. It's a very popular subject if you start looking for it. Um, but definitely, and don't be afraid to reach out either, you know, through email. Don't be afraid to hit people up. Um, You've got to start somewhere, and um, you're not always going to be able to catch people face to face. So I think if you can start practicing on reaching out through social media, I mean, I, don't do this. Don't say, don't just send them a link. You know what I mean? Uh, people are busy, so be respectful. You know what I mean? I know that sounds crazy sometimes, but respect people's time. You know, it's about building that relationship that's going to be long standing, right? We know that you just want them to get you money. But you've got to let them know that you not only want them to get you money, you want a long-standing relationship. And that can start by just simply saying, hey, what's up? You know, Or if you watch shows, right? you watch the shows, they tell you who the music supervisor is. They tell you the artist. They tell you all that stuff. So if you see the shows, you hear the music, and you say, oh, man, I think I could get something here, go on, uh, what is it, IMBD or something, right? And look up that person's name. Find them. Like, stalk them. <laughs> is, there, is there somewhere where they're meeting like every year, like San Francisco? Sync Summit is, is one of the. They have the Sync Summit. They do it three times a year: okay. L.A., New York, Paris, uh, somewhere else. Sync um, South by South by Southwest is great. The panels there sometimes it's all about music super um, supervisors. Um, they have placements on major films, etc. They tell you exactly what they're looking for, what they don't like to see. Um, he touched on it. It's about being professional. You you want to almost send them an EPK, basically of of uh, what you're trying to pitch, a way for them to actually listen to it, to note it. Um, they also look for the music to be already in platforms too. They do a lot of searching and discovery on Spotify and many others, so uh, consider all that stuff too. Perfect, thank you. Awesome, so um, next question. Anybody has a question? Okay, yeah, yeah. I know y'all have said just go out and get money. But <laughs> it's, it's that easy too. That's, that's what I was about to say, man. Funny. Like, can y'all offer like, you know, don't tell, don't be like, you should do this, you should do this, but just be like, you know, like, how can you generate capital? You know what I'm saying? It's different levels of success. Some people feel like if you make half a mil, you're doing good. Some people feel like you make a quarter mil. Some people feel like 50 stacks. How can you generate, ca like, cause me, cause I teach and shit, I'm going to hire my students like as interns, you know what I'm saying? And 
you know, develop them because like if you a public relations major, you could use the deliverables you producing me, you know, for your own portfolio. You know what I'm saying? So how can I generate capital to kind of, you know, give them a little bit of bread for the duties that they're doing for me? And now you're talking about like your marketing and with yeah. your company, right? Yes. Aside from like creating music. I mean, I think <laughs> if you, uh, I'm just gonna throw something at you, right? So I think if you can start building campaigns, right, on things that you care about, right, that maybe you don't need to spend funds around, put something dope together, curate something good and tally where you're at, right? Um, do it to the top notch. Like you from Florida, you know about uh, like Dim Week and all that stuff, right? So build something similar to that, right? Get something that is a mainstay where you are and the money's gonna come. But you gotta kinda still from like your marketing side of thing, I think you've gotta prove to the people that what you got is worth that, you know what I mean? I think once you start doing things and you start putting it out there, then I think you, you won't necessarily have to worry about that conversion because the business will start coming to you. Yeah, I think you gotta start, yeah. you gotta start investing and putting it out there. So if nobody has any other questions, um, I wanna let you know where you can find each of the panelists here. You can find me at IMPR Agency uh, on Twitter, at Audio Common, at CD Baby, at Symphonic Distribution. Again, the, pan the hashtag for the panel was Be Your Own Label, hashtag A3C15. If you guys have any questions, you can come up with anything else. They'll be available right after the panel. You can also go on their website and you know uh, send them an inquiry. And the last thing that I would love to do is do a selfie with everybody. So I just want to do a selfie. So if you want to stand here and you guys, if you want to stand up, we just want to take one. One thing, too, um, goes with anything you do, be humble. Be humble. Do not not be humble, because it gets really annoying for all of us, and you just think you're the shit. And it's like, come on, man. Like, so just, if you be humble at everything, you'll gain, immediately gain a lot of respect. And we will do what we can for you. If you are being real, being humble, all the time, everything, anything, it, it'll, it'll work wonders, I'm serious. So, so everybody just gather around and he took out for me. ourselves like this.